the season's winding down and because we are a seasonal farm, I like to consolidate everything into the, uh, the main areas that we have to preserve over the winter. So right now we don't have any insulation in our building and it's very expensive to heat over the winter time. So what I do is I'll build my own walk-in incubator and that way I can still do my processing over the winter. But when it gets really cold and I don't feel like working down here, everything is protected in its little shell. So I'll kind of walk you through my breakdown process and what I do to protect all of my cultures over the winter. So the first step I'll do is go through my liquid culture inventory. And what I like to do is take them from the bulk jars, which is my working culture, and I'll create an inventory of individual syringes. So that does two things. So the first thing it's going to do is protect it from any contamination after it leaves the flow hood. So normally I'll only work with my liquid cultures in front of the flow hood, but in order to transport them into my incubator, I'll put them into the syringes. And then also it creates an inventory for when I'm selling my cultures over the winter. So our building isn't insulated. So over the winter, it can get really cold. And what I do is I'll make a walk-in incubator temporarily during the winter months. So that way I can continue my culture work. And then if it gets too cold um, to come down here, I'll just have them all protected in my incubator in the meantime. After I pull all my cultures from my liquid culture, I'll go and check out my incubator and my grain spawn rack. So if I'm in between any projects, I'll wrap these up for the winter before starting anything new. And then for all of my grain spawn projects, I can either put those into a refrigerator for the springtime, or what I prefer to do is just wrap it all up and uh, finish any kind of grain spawn that I have left, or, or it'll go into the compost pile. Coming down the, the uh, lab here, um, I have all of my mother cultures. So typically I'll go through these about twice a year. And what I like to do is I'll check for the health of the cultures. So make sure that there's no contaminants. Um, I'll check for the media, for any discoloration and make sure that they're healthy. And then I'll systematically go through these, update my inventory, and then also store them in my walk-in incubator. So if you want, I can go over and explain how I make this. It took about five minutes to set up and it's a really efficient way to, um, ins instead of heating my entire building, I can just compartmentalize everything and focus all my heating into one little area. So this is my walk-in incubator. So I'll put links to all this stuff in the description below. But basically this is a pop-up ice fishing tent that I use as an incubator in the winter and it can double down as a refrigerated cordyceps tent in the summer as well um, if it gets too hot where you're at. But I really like this concept because when I'm not using it, it takes up very little space and it only took about five minutes to set up. So. All of this is on uh, tension rods and it folds down into a bag that's maybe about six feet by two feet and it pops up into this beautiful um, insulated box basically. So on the outside, it's waterproof. It's pretty uh, tear resistant and I'm very confident that it's gonna hold the temperature that I need it very efficiently. So um, it does have these vents here, but on the inside there's covers, especially for the windows as well. So if you're growing light sensitive mushrooms like cordyceps, it's really good for blocking out the light. And then you can add LEDs or whatever to control the lighting on the inside. So what I do is, like I said before, I'll go through my inventory and then it's very easy to wheel the shelving inside this tent and I create a library 
of all of my cultures for the winter. Here I am inside of the fish ice fishing tent and the two critical pieces of equipment that you're going to need um, is this ink bird here. So this is just a thermostat. It has a high setting and a low setting. And then I have um, this basic uh, radiator heater. So these are extremely efficient and it can maintain the temperature within a few degrees. So I'll set it for about 70 or 72 degrees in here. And basically when I set the temperature on this ink bird, it's gonna turn the heater on when it drops below the set temperature. And then once it reaches that temperature, it's gonna turn the heater off. So very basic setup, but it's very effective and that way I only have to heat up this tent instead of my whole entire building. So it's a very efficient way to protect my cultures. And I really enjoy these uh, ice fishing tents because of their efficiency. So here I am in our finished um, walk-in incubator. So the library is organized with our slants in the corner over here. So these are all of our mother cultures, nice and protected. And then I've got some fresher pulled liquid culture and then some older liquid culture jars that I'm about to be renewing. And I've got some Petri dishes here that are gonna be expanded into the new cultures. Um, also hanging from the ceiling is this probe. So that's attached to the ink bird thermostat. So every time the temperature drops below 60, it'll kick on the space heater. And because this is so well insulated, it's a very efficient way to protect my cultures over the winter.